In this video, I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Mark Holtzapple, professor at the R.D. McFerrin Department of Chemical Engineering here at Texas A&M University. And so, let's begin. I think the general theme of my research is sustainability. Uh, I'm very concerned about how we can maintain the quality of life that we have and still not damage the planet that we live on. Uh, so my research breaks down into a number of areas. One of them is to make fuels and industrial chemicals from renewable resources such as biomass. Uh, the idea is we can take anything biodegradable and process it to make almost anything that's currently made from natural gas and oil. Um, another area of interest is water desalination. As the population grows, the demands on fresh water get more and more and more, and so we need to come up with ways to economically remove fresh water from seawater. Uh, another technology we call star rotor technology. Uh, these are engines made from compressors and expanders that use something called gyrotors. Uh, so a gyrotor is a kind of a gear-like device that it's a purely rotation and if they're extremely efficient uh, devices and very compact uh, so there are many applications where efficiency and compactness is very valued uh, and ultimately our objective is to combine a com star rotor compressor and expander into a star rotor engine. We haven't accomplished that yet but that, that's the goal. Let me be clear, I, I did not create uh, Earth Energy Renewables, that's actually been created by an, another person from the company's perspective. Now their purpose is to take the technology that we've developed and bring it into the commercial world. Uh, so so I just they, they are focusing exclusively on our technology, uh, but I did not uh, lead the business aspects of that company. Uh, I'm very pleased that they're making great progress they have received what's called Series A funding, which is enough to build an integrated pilot plant, and then uh, that should be completed this summer, and then they will then go to a commercial plant about a year from now. So roughly 20, beginning of 2019, they'll start building a commercial plant, and it takes roughly a year to build it, uh, so roughly 2020, uh, if everything goes according to plan, the first commercial products will come out of our process. And as an aside, that will be pretty close to 30 years that I've been working on this. So from the time I conceived of it till it actually produces product that's commercialized, uh, and if it goes according to the schedule, that will be very close to 30 years. Actually, uh, my dream would be that uh, I would drive a car that has a star rotor engine. And when I drive up to the gas station, I fill up with gasoline. It comes from the biofuel process that we're developing. So that, uh, to me, that those are two very important technologies, a high-efficiency engine and a very efficient, uh, low-cost biofuels. Uh, to, to a large degree, electricity is a, is a solved problem. Uh, we have wind and solar and nuclear and so forth. Uh, so there's lots of ways to make electricity that are carbon neutral. Uh, but vehicles, uh, I'm not sure that we have good solutions yet. Uh, uh, I know there's a lot of interest in electric vehicles, all electric. I, I still am not uh, satisfied that that's the way that, that most people would want to go, that it takes too long to recharge. Uh, the, the load it puts on the grid, if everybody does it, is, the grid is not capable of handling it. Uh, so so I, I do believe there's a need for liquid transportation fuels. Uh, and, and the question is, how do you come up with carbon neutral liquid transportation fuels? It has to be biomass. Ch chemical engineers take the uh, principles of chemistry and the principles of mechanical engineering and combine those two together. Uh, kind of, we're kind of a hybrid chemist mechanical engineer. Uh, to me, that's the best description of what a chemi is. I think uh, I want them to real realize that education is not a game. Uh, you know, there's there's the the through high school and elementary school and maybe your freshman year of college, 
uh, it, it was a game. The, the professor teaches you a body of material, you, you practice certain problems, and then you know on the exam those problems are going to show up maybe with little different numbers than what you did. And then you think, okay, I did that. I'm, I'm, I'm brilliant. I, I'm really good. I got high grades. I'm really, really good. All of that is useful, but it doesn't let you cross the finish line. Uh, what, what distinguishes a, a real practicing engineer is that they master this material and it can apply it to anything. Uh, so so you, you have to truly internalize this information and apply it in unique ways and, and creative ways. Uh, so so I, I set a standard for my students that I, I refuse to play that game where you know, we have a homework set and then the exam is the same problem but with different numbers and uh, I, just, I just don't believe that that's the kind of prepare students for the real world. Yeah, so uh, I, I desperately want my students to do well in the real world. So, so in the real world, the boss doesn't say, uh, here's a problem, you have two hours to solve it. Uh, if you get it partly done, I'll give you some partial credit. That, is, that isn't how it works in the real world. So I am trying to get my students prepared for the real world, where you actually have to get the right answer, and, and, but you have more time to get there. Uh, so so I, I'm, I'm a believer in uh, creating challenging problems, not like the homework, that are good representative real-world problems, but giving you time and resources, books, access to the Internet, whatever you need uh, in order to solve that problem. To, to me, that's going to get you ready for the real world. I, I think the... The advice I would give is you really need to figure out what your goal is. Uh, if you can find your goal, what you're passionate about, go at it with everything that you've got. Uh, I, I know there's some struggle you, to, to find your, your goal, what is it you're passionate about, but I, I think uh, setting effort towards that is, is very, very important. So if, if you're in high school, uh, you actually have a fair amount of time at your disposal. American high schools generally do not have as much homework as, let's say, they do in China or England or Germany or India. Uh, so you have this unique opportunity where you actually have time uh, where you can explore. I, I personally think that that's better. Uh, I, I think that... Uh, so often in these countries where it's so prescriptive, people don't have creativity uh, and then they, they lose their passion because they're being told what they have to do. Where we have this freedom in America to explore your interests, so take advantage of that. Don't just play video games all the time. Uh, play, play in the real world. Find out what interests you in the real world. And so that when you finally get to college, you have a very good idea of what you're interested in and then you go at it with a passion. Actually, the students. Uh, I, I really, really love the students. Uh, the students are respectful. Uh, they're bright. They're hardworking. Uh, they have good values. Uh, they, they go off into the world and do great things. So uh, I can tell you that there's frustrations with every job, including being a professor. Uh, but the students call me all the time. I, I, I want to help the students. <laughs>